Hello and welcome to this webinar on invasive fish in the Columbia Shoe Swap area. I'm Sue Davies McGill and I work with the Columbia Shoe Swap Invasive Species Society. Today I'll be talking about what invasive species are, some good reasons for pre preventing their spread, how to identify them, how they travel, and how you can help. And then I'll give you a few more resources at the end. So what are invasive species anyway? Invasive species are organisms that have not evolved within the local ecosystem. Typically, they outcompete or prey on native organisms, causing negative impacts on native species, on human use of the environment, and often costing millions. They can be plants, animals, insects, invertebrates, or even diseases. Sometimes they disturb the natural balance of the area simply because they have some special ability. For example, yellow perch have very high reproductive capacity each adult spawning around 15,000 eggs per year. Other special abilities lead to extremely successful colonization of new locations, like this fragment of Eurasian water milfoil, growing roots while floating and able to establish in all new locations around a lake. Invasive fish can become voracious predators. In their native range, organisms are limited by the competitiveness of the species they live with, but in invaded ecosystems, often the locals just can't cope. Invaders faced with native prey, naive prey, can become extremely voracious predators and can wipe out local fisheries. In some cases, the outcome of an illegal introduction of invasive fish can produce unexpected results. When yellow perch, a good sport fish in its native habitat, is introduced to western waters, what often happens is that there is such high survival of the young that they become so numerous that they're just aren't the food resources for them to grow large, and we end up with a population of tiny fish that are no good as sport fish. Even invasive plants on land can impact waterways. Invasive riparian plants such as yellow flag iris and knotweeds can change water flow patterns and damage waterfowl ha habitat and fish spawning habitat. Invasive mussels and clams can filter out all the living plankton from the water, cutting the food chain that game species rely on. And after filtering out all that plankton, mussels and clams poop out a nutrient soup which can favour conditions for toxic algal blooms. Not to mention the fact that invasive mussels cling to any hard surface under the water, leading to clogged water pipes, foul tasting water and huge maintenance costs for water systems and hydropower. They'll also cling to the hull of your boat, requiring anti-fouling every year and reducing the performance of your boat. Invasive plants like milfoil and curly pondweed can really impact recreation, tangling around boat propellers and making it unpleasant or even dangerous to swim. The reality is that we just don't want invasive species here. So now we know that we don't want them, let's take a look at some of the species we're talking about. First off, yellow perch. This is a species native to eastern and northern Canada. The yellow perch were illegally introduced to some of the small lakes in the Thompson region and thanks to an eradication program were successfully removed from these lakes a decade ago. Unfortunately, there are no good options for removing invasive fish from larger or more complex water bodies. Perch are known to be in the Columbia system near Revelstoke and in several larger lakes in the Thompson and Okanagan regions. Largemouth and smallmouth bass are again native to eastern North America. They have been illegally introduced to several water bodies in BC. Smallmouth bass were eradicated from some small lakes in our region, leaving no known locations of either species in the Columbia Shoe Swap region. The two species are similar to look at, the difference between them being that the mouth of the smallmouth does not go rear of the eye. The pumpkin seed sunfish is native again to eastern and northern Canada. They were successfully eradicated from small, some small lakes in our region. The northern pike, as its name suggests, this species is native to northern areas of Canada, including northern BC. It is not native in the Columbia Shoe Swap region. A voracious predator, this species can decimate native fish species through directly hunting them. They are known in the Columbia River but only downstream of the Hugh Kenley side dam at Castlegar. Brook trout are also native to eastern parts of the, of the country and are actually a char, not a trout. 
identified by the womb-like patterns on their dorsal surface and the red dots with blue halo on their sides. Modern stocking with this species uses only non-reproductive individuals, but some reproductive capable fish were stocked into some water bodies in the past. Hybridization with bull trout is therefore a potential issue with this species. Parks Canada is looking at the feasibility of removing or reducing them in some of their parks. Goldfish. These are not always gold and sometimes are olive green or splotched with white or gold. Originating in home aquariums, if they are let loose into a lake, they can grow way larger than the tiny ones we see in a goldfish bowl. Goldfish are omnivorous and typically create very muddy conditions when feeding, which can damage spawning habitat for native species. This species is known in White Lake, Canoe Pond and some smaller ponds and lakes in the region. It is possible that they've made their way to the Shuswap Lake. In 2020, an electrofishing effort was successfully used to reduce goldfish numbers in White Lake. Strangely enough, the common carp, although from Asia, are not considered Asian carp. The big difference between these and true Asian carp is that common carp have barbells beside their mouths, where Asian carps do not. If you accidentally catch something that looks like this, check to see if it has barbells to help identify it. They also have a longer dorsal fin than the Asian carp. This species is present in BC and known in both the Shuswap and Upper Arrow Lakes. And finally, the Asian carp, which are not yet known in BC. The name Asian carp actually refers to a group of four species, big head carp, black carp, grass carp, and silver carp. These fish grow very fast, often reaching a size that is too big for our native fish, native predatory fish within their first year. They can reach about one and a half meters or five feet long and 40 kilos or 90 pounds. You may have seen footage of these fish all madly jumping out of the water as boats go by. This is typically the silver carp and they've actually been known to injure boaters. No one wants to get slapped in the face by a 40 kilogram fish. So now you know some of the species we're talking about. It's important to remember that it is illegal to transport any live fin fish or to introduce them to any water body in BC. To reduce the temptation for anglers to illegally introduce fish to BC waters, the province has some strong rules in place. Firstly, if a new introduction is discovered, that water body will be immediately closed to fishing for that species. And in some high risk cases, the water body will be closed to all fishing indefinitely. There are some special cases where fishing is allowed as part of the management strategy, but all these water bodies are listed in the regulations. Basically, you may only fish for invasive fish where the regulations state that species is expressly allowed in a particular water body. So what does this mean if you accidentally catch an invasive fish? If it's not listed as allowed in the regulations, you must release it but please take a photo and send us a report first. This may seem counterintuitive, but it is designed this way to prevent the further illegal introduction of invasive fish to water bodies in BC. And here's an example from the current regulations. This is Garnet Lake in the Okanagan, which has been indefinitely closed to public fishing due to the illegal introduction of largemouth bass. Nobody wants this, so tell all your friends that illegal introductions are just a bad idea. So we've talked a bit about fish, but I want to show you some non-fish invasives too. Probably our highest priority aquatic invasive species are zebra and quagga mussels, two similar species whose native range is Eurasia. They're not known in any BC water bodies and we need to keep it that way. Invasive mussels are quite small, about the size of a dime. They're the ones at the top of this image panel. And they'll always be found clinging to hard surfaces. They're not to be confused with our native mussels, which are typically much larger, about the size of the palm of your hand. Native mussels lack the ability to cling and are usually found in or on the sediment at the bottom of a lake or river. Some of our native mussels are actually endangered, so should not be disturbed. You can see the much smaller adult invasive mussels here actually clinging to the shell of a native mussel. There are a couple of invasive crayfish species that are not known in BC, but have invaded other provinces and states. These are the rusty crayfish, 
which typically has a rust colored dot on its side, and the red swamp crayfish with speckled red claws. There's one species of native crayfish in BC, the signal crayfish, which has distinct white hinges on its claws seen from above and a whitish underside. Please ensure that you do not use or release non-native crayfish into wild BC. The New Zealand mud snail is a very tiny but very numerous snail that can create havoc if introduced to new, new waterways. It is currently known to infest several waterways in Idaho. This is where it's very important to clean, drain and dry your watercraft every time you move it from one lake to another to prevent these tiny hitchhikers hikers from taking a ride. Plants can also hitch a ride on boats. Curly pondweed and Eurasian milf, water milfoil are two species we do have in our region, but only in some lakes. Help prevent their spread to uninfested lakes by always removing all plant fragments from your boat, trailer and gear. Finally, whirling disease. This is a disease that affects all trout, salmon and whitefish. It can kill up to 90% of fish in a given population. It's currently affecting fish in the Bow River system in Alberta, but is not known in BC. It deforms the fish and damages the brain tissue, making the fish swim in circles until it dies. This disease can be spread through infested mud and infected fish tissue. The spores of the disease are so resistant that they can survive sewage treatment plants, making it extremely important never to flush any fish down the garburetor. Please dispose of all fish tissue in the solid waste system, i.e. the garbage. So now we know why we don't want invasive species and we have some idea of what to look for, but what can we do about it? Well, this is an image of the human transportation system. Humans get around a bit. Unfortunately, we often accidentally transport invasives with us. Preventing that accidental spread is what I need you to focus on. The best way to do this is to ensure that you always clean, drain and dry your watercraft, trailer and gear when you move it from one lake to another. This means walking around the boat and removing any plant fragments, mud or clinging animals. Then draining all standing water onto dry land, including the bilge, bait wells, ballast tanks, even the water engine coolant system, the lake water and the engine coolant system if possible. And making sure that everything is crispy dry before it is relaunched into a new water body. Also, if you are traveling with a watercraft, you must stop at any inspection stations that are open. This map shows the locations of inspection stations. And just a note, Watercraft means all waterborne craft, whether that's a little belly boat you can roll up in the back of your truck or something much larger. Failure to stop when you have a watercraft on board could land you an instant $345 fine. But stopping takes just a few minutes, doesn't cost you anything, and will guarantee that you're not accidentally bringing in an invasive that could harm BC's beautiful fishing waters. And please don't transport or release live fish. Doing so is illegal and could lead to lakes and rivers being closed to fishing, as well as causing damage to native fish stocks and our environment. And avoid the use of live bait. See the fishing regulations for live bait restrictions. If you do use it, ensure that you never release live individuals. If you see anyone attempting to release live fish, please report it to the Conservation Officer Service through their 24 hour emergency hotline, the RAP line shown here in red. And just to make all this super easy for you, we've got an app for this. It's called the Report Invasives BC app. It's free to download, it's picture-based, and it's to help you identify your catch. And it allows for sending in a report directly through the app. Even if you're out of cell service, the app geolocates the image and report location and sends the report when you get back into service. This app is available for iPhone and Android. So you can report invasives of all type directly to our web society on our website at columbiashoeswapinvasives.org slash report invasives, or you can don download the app for easy ID and reporting when you're out and about. Search the app store for report, report invasives BC. Also, those download links are on our website. If you see invasive mussels or someone releasing live fish, please report to the Conservation Officer Service Emergency Wrap Line. 
For more information, please contact us, the Columbia Shoe Swap Invasive Species Society, on our toll-free number, by email, or on our website. Thank you for your time and happy invasive-free angling.